clock is ticking. We are less than five hours away from the kickoff of Tesla's AI day. Elon Musk, you know, he's kind of bound to say anything at these events. In April of 2019, he had promised that a full fleet of self-driving Tesla taxis would be deployed this year. And while we clearly aren't there on that promise just yet, and the stock's down 2% at the very moment, let's bring in someone who's at the very forefront of making a moonshot like that a reality. Austin Russell, CEO and founder of Luminar, a global leader in automotive light detection and ranging hardware, a.k.a. LiDAR, says his lasers can help build the uncrashable car. Let's bring in Austin, CEO of Luminar. Austin, great to have you back. All right. You know, it feels like Elon Musk might make some brave new world of technology predictions during his keynote. What would you love to hear most from him tonight? <laughs> well, uh, you know, I, I think it's, it's certainly an interesting time with uh, with everything going on. But I think the, the reality is, yeah. is that, you know, whether, whether they like it or not, the uh, people have come more and more to appreciate just how challenging of a problem self-driving vehicles is to be able to solve for, you know, urban environments, complex environments, and be able to do so much less with, um, you know, to be able to try to do so without, without the required sensing capability. And, and that's part of the distinction of what we've been solving for, is to be able to allow these cars to accurately see and understand everything on them, you know, very, to a stage of where you can solve that last 1%, solve all of the edge cases that are difficult. And I think, you know, a recognition of that, and at the same time, um, the ability to focus not just on uh, trying to better improve the systems of today, but taking the leap to be able to get to the systems of tomorrow for what's required and to just focus as much as anything on safety is going to be the key uh, to being able to successfully enable this industry. Well, you know, everybody wants everything now, yesterday. Uh, but how and where are we at the moment when it comes to LiDAR that can actually create what you say will be the uncrashable car? So we're actually already starting out to see some of the results of this, too. And, you know, when, when it comes to the LiDAR equipped on vehicles, uh, one of the big breakthroughs that we had was actually with one, starting with one of our OEMs that we're working with, Volvo. They're now going to be standardizing the Luminar technology on every new vehicle they produce. Uh, of starting with the uh, with the of the XC90 variety, the next generation all electric uh, car that they have. And this is where the significance is, is that it goes beyond just the highway autonomy capabilities we've been talking about. It actually goes to how can you substantially improve the safety of a vehicle when the human is driving to be able to create that uncrashable car, as you're saying. And that's that's exactly what we're going for with this. So um, with that, we're already well, starting to see the results. Yeah. We actually just showed off the first results in uh, in our Munich, uh, Germany office, where you can actually see the car coming to a safe stop, even for these pedestrian detection scenario examples uh, in tough use cases. I, I find that fascinating. And uh, listen, Volvo was always known as sort of the ultimate safe vehicle, and they're going all electric. And clearly, you have this partnership with them. I know that Tesla is using some of your stuff in their research, but what about a partnership? I asked you this last time, and, and I know you kind of were like, mm, I don't know, we, you know, we'll work with anybody, but have you had conversations with Elon Musk about this? Well, listen, I, I think there have been some some leaks out there, too, or, or rumblings about, you know, uh, systems on, on their cars that look... Uh, very similar to ours, uh, so to so to say, you know, uh, out out there. But uh, the the reality is is that um, we're setting the benchmark and the and the gold standard in the industry with this. Everyone's recognized that this is what you need to be able to get there. It's just a question of of when, you know, for each of these different automakers. And uh, we've already been off to the races. We're actually working in the testing and and or development phase with eight out of the top ten major automakers. Already having one a major series deals with uh, with a number of them already, you know, kind of the first of its kind mm -hmm. for this kind of capability. Sure. So you know, it's 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 all about that 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 focus. Um, some will be certainly uh, sooner than later. Some also have legacy uh, promises or whatever it is that they're they're going to have to find their way to um, uh, <laughs> to, uh, to to feasibly explain. But the reality is is that you know this is something that. Uh, requires an, a new level of safety if we want to be able to successfully solve autonomy and solve the safety problem for driving. Yeah, 
I completely get that. Um, but the, the competitors are circling. We just had an IPO yesterday, uh, or at least a public debut of AI, which is the ticker symbol LIDAR. They're clearly kind of trying to edge into that area. And, and I, I don't mean to just like really hammer this Tesla issue, but Elon Musk has said in the past, now nah, I don't really need LIDAR on my cars. But what could you do for him with your technology Especially as we have, uh, you know, the National Highway Transportation Safety Administration doing an investigation into recent crashes of, you know, Tesla's going into emergency vehicles and some of these crashes are occurring at night. You know, you guys are this sort of electric eye, are you not? And, and can see all. What could you do if you slapped a bunch of these on a Tesla Model Y, for example? Right. Uh, uh, absolutely. And I think I think that you know, the probe there isn't necessarily, our government probe isn't a surprise to, uh, you know, most, if not all the experts in the industry when, when it comes down to it. But when it, but the reality is, is that the, the focus, there needs to be a substantially increased focus on safety, you know, because there is a direct opportunity. What, what's the difference? What does this allow you to do? It allows you to not hit things. The reality is, is that vehicles still get into collisions all the time, whether whether it's Tesla's or otherwise, yes. you know, in, in, in any example there too. I think uh, I think the distinction maybe why there's more attention to there is because they're calling it a full self-driving system when it when it when it's not, um, you know, and that's that's the distinction. But uh, when when it comes down to most automakers, the goal is how can you make these vehicles much much safer when they are human driven, and then how can you start to enable truly autonomous functionality, hands off, eyes off, you know, where you can recover that time, read a phone, or sorry, read a book, use your phone, work on your laptop, watch a movie, take right, a nap, right. you know, whatever it may be. So that that that's that's the whole point. But um, but yeah, we're, we're taking it to the next level, and we're only reinforcing it. Uh, actually, just a couple hours ago, we announced. Uh, that we're bringing on a number of great new leaders, you know, onto the Luminar team, uh, you know, and uh, everyone from um, the Waymos and Aptives of this world, executives from across the board to be able to help focus on the strategy, focus on execution, and focus on delivering this into the market for uh, ultimately uh, not just the initial OEMs yep. that we work with, but the entire landscape. Yeah, saw that Sardar Gotham is coming from Waymo. We uh, we went out to <laughs> we went out to um, uh, Arizona and and drove along with. Uh, John Krafcek, and watched how Waymo is really taking over, and it's a fascinating, really great time right now, and you're, you're right at the forefront. Austin, thank you very much. Uh, the stock has, yeah, struggled about 50 percent down since the start of the year, but still up 50 percent year over year. We'll see you next time, Austin. Please keep us posted on any new partnerships as we follow the stock. Absolutely. Will do. Well, thanks for having me.